Hello there and welcome to R10, medieval dynasty where it's cold now, the character is freezing unless he is inside. What I will do, I will make myself lots of torches, then I will go to the Gostovia to talk to my potential future wife and then I hope so that uh, you can get the potion of sobriety from, I think it was Baranica. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that. And would you look at that? I was going through my inventory and I realized I have a potion of sobriety here. I guess I picked it up somewhere from some crashed, probably some crashed cart or something like that. So yeah, I have it. Awesome. Lack of the badgers. <laughs> I really didn't, I really didn't make this up or like did it off camera i just had it here okay let's make myself a lot of torches because i will need them from this for this coldness all right let's go to gostovia <laughs> oh he's freezing and here we are i hope she will be here you must admit it looks nice hello oh she actually changed her clothes not like me hello romance how are you doing <laughs> I truly admire you. Yeah, this. How are you doing? Have you heard about a blacksmith from Hornica? He's always horny and hammered. Your smile is more to do, do, do. All right. Four hours to sink. And that's it. She has enough of talk. Can Bye -bye. I recruit her? Can I? Does she work as a hunter? No. Soon. Soon. Okay, I should find some clothes. You, I need a tailor, child. Where nice can I you. find vendors? Uh, production, craftsman, is it craftsman? Borrow. Goodbye. That's over there. Okay, it's on my way. No, it's not. I need to go there to Hornitsa. Okay, let's run with my torch during the day all the way there and finish the quest for you, Unigos. And here we are once more. We came back to Hornica, Hornica, and now it's time to deliver the potion to Kestrel so she can sober up. At least it's not raining. Kestrel, hello. Let's see, without the torch, will I notice her? Yeah, it's very hard to notice her here in the dark. Hello. With it, the stains of time, the feelings disappeared. You are someone else, I am still right here. I'm back, it's all going to be okay, just drink this. What? What's going on? Who are you? Those eyes? Is that it? Am I dead? You are very much alive, Kestrel. My name is Rasimir. Jordan was my uncle. Of course, your eyes, now I understand. I'm sorry, I've been quite distant lately. Please don't mind this mess. It was some badgers that got in through the window. Those bloody badgers. It's very nice to see you. Me and your uncle were working together. Trade mostly. So I don't want to be rude, but I already spoken with Unigost. I've actually met Sambor and Volrat as well. I know about your mission. Very good to hear that. I wasn't ever a good liar. That's what a friend of mine did it pretty well. Yes, your friend Jordan. I know about that too. I see. And you know a lot, kid. No more bullcrap for you then. We were all part of a pack, a family really. We never had a name or anything, but we did have some reputation in realms far away from here. The pack was all that we had, until the day it all fell apart. But you probably know about it as well. I don't actually, no one has told me yet what had happened. Well, it seems that the boys would rather tell you about the happy days. But you seem like you are ready to handle the realness as well, don't you? I am. It was 12 years after the pack was fully formed. Over a decade of adventures, mischief, tightening of bonds. We still felt young, but the thought of retirement from our operation was getting more and more real. We even had a place picked out where we could grow old in peace. Yes, you guessed that right. The valley was always our end game place to settle down. But no one, not none of us realized that the end is so near. We were staying for a job in a town called Navis. Spent weeks there. Everybody started to get a little nervous, little frustrated, because Jordan was planning it all on his own. 
He was always secretive, and we kinda got used to it, but this time some, something was off. He kept telling us that he was meeting with some informant. I've seen him a couple of times through a window, tall as an oak and thin as a straw. Skinny face and jug ears made him look like a rat. Pity little eyes didn't help him as well. Jordan said that he was keeping us out of the loop for the rat man's safety. So we waited, played dice, drank and waited. When Jordan finally revealed his plan, plan it sounded like a jo joke. Weeks of planning for a job so simple. We could do it with our eyes closed. So I'm guessing it wasn't so easy after all. <coughs> so Supposedly there was a lot of stolen loot in the town's whole treasury, brought in by corrupted militia. Plan was simple, get in, steal it back and return it to the rightful owners. Child's play. Jordan and Walrat were supposed to make a distraction when Unigost and Sambor went inside the treasury. And me as usual was waiting with the horses ready to run. All went according to the plan, no surprises. Sambor and Unigost were loading the cargo onto the horses when I saw Waldrat walking towards us alone. He said that Jordan split up with him and should be right back. I, my torch went away. <laughs> I didn't like that, there was no reason for him to split, so I decided to go on and check on him. I could smell his posh perfume from a mile away, so it wasn't hard. We swiftly followed his scent right into a town scribe chamber. That's when I saw it. It wasn't for the ears, I would never have recognized him. His face was bashed in so hard you could almost see the floor through it. Jordan was standing by the ratman's body wiping blood off his hand. He did it with a bottle of mead, which then he took a sip of. I'll never forget how casually he looked in that moment, like it was the most normal thing to do. He hid some kind of book or journal behind his belt and then he noticed me. For a second there I saw his true face. His pure reaction to seeing me. It wasn't fear or shame, it was just annoyance. He scolded me for ruining his plan, for its subordination. This honest reaction even he couldn't control. And just like that his face changed completely. He was shocked, afraid, out of breath suddenly. Maybe even a tear was glistering in his eyes. He grabbed my hand and said that we need to run, that we are not safe, that he will explain. So we ran to our brothers in arms, got on horses and escaped. I told everybody what I'd seen. Jordan break the most sacred of rules, his own rule. He was trying to explain himself, but all that we heard was more and more lies. The trust has been broken. We were talking and arguing the whole night. At dawn, Walrat was the first to leave. We always kind of treated him like our younger brother who forced himself on a journey. But in that moment, he was the most mature of us all and it was clear that the pack has come to an end. Sambor left right after, then I did the same. Unicos stayed with Jordan, he couldn't live without him, he loved him the most, even more than me. When I was walking away I saw the face of Jordan again. Our eyes met for a split second, and they were not sad but full of contempt. I'm sorry, Rasimir, you probably expected something different. It doesn't matter what ex I expected, only the truth. The truth's always a bitch, never pretty, never certain, full of doppelgangers and dirty lovers all over. But it still points to Jordan being a killer. Your uncle was an extraordinary man. Yeah, that's what everybody is saying. Truly brilliant, ahead of his time, I would say. His mind was able to predict things that should be unpredictable. He read people like books. And with all that excellence came a price. The perfectionist in his brain couldn't cope with losing, with being wrong. Jordan had a really short fuse sometimes. He suffered from constant loneliness. Loneliness? He had you, all of you. Hack, the family, everybody loved him. And yet we were the only thing persistently keeping him down. Caring about us, loving us, it was a burden to him. The emotional ties that made us him dependent, weak, common. And being ordinary for him was worse than death. That's really sad to be honest. Having us kept him grounded, but he couldn't restrict his ambition. It was like a flesh eating disease consuming him from within. Being anonymous started suffocating him. 
Seeing smile on faces he helped wasn't enough. Hearing praises and thanks wasn't enough. He wanted to be acknowledged, to be worshipped, to be feared. I can't believe you're talking about the Jordan. I thought he was a hero. I wanted to be like him. Life's hard, kiddo. You can't judge a book by its cover. Same as you can't judge a man by the one thing he did or the part of his life. Nothing's just black and white. Unigos told me the same thing. He probably knew Jordan better than anyone else. He knew the worst of him. But he was a brother to him nevertheless. He couldn't have hurt him. Well, he didn't have an affair. He, well, he did have an affair with Jordan's woman. So you know about that as well. Seems that Unigos and you grow, grew really close together. Yes, he did. I did. And I'm sure that Jordan knew all about it. Are you serious? That man could deduce the color of ladies' knickers just by hearing her laughter. I'm sure he knew about me and Unigost. Why didn't he say anything? Wondering about that would torture me at nights. I had a couple of hypotheses. But the thing that speaks to me the most is the simplest of answers. He didn't care. He didn't love me that much to want me all to himself. Yes, he wanted us to be happy, so he didn't intervene. It, I'm sure it was funny to him watching us wa wallow in a lie, like, child like watching children playing a grown man game. Maybe he could have changed. Maybe if the baby wasn't... Sorry, I didn't. If the baby wasn't born dead, don't be sorry, that's what happened. Maybe he was happy about it, or at least appeared to be. Didn't want to hear me when I was saying that it could be a girl. He wanted a boy, a mini Orton to keep him company, but it wouldn't have to work, not at that, that, that time at least. Why is that? He wasn't his... his... So you knew it, it was Unigos then. A mother's always no such things. I knew it was Unigos from the moment I felt his heart beating inside me, but you never told any of them. No, I felt like the lack of truth was a better solution in that situation. But you don't have to agree with me. I, there was, and I don't. You try to keep the boat happy, and yet I failed at that miserably. Still, you put their happiness before your own. Let's not talk about it any longer. There is a very important matter I've been getting to you. You may think I'm crazy, but I have to say it. I don't believe that Jordan died of natural causes. What? What are you saying? I think he was murdered. What makes you say that? What do you know about his death? Not much actually, only that he died peacefully in his sleep. That was what Unigos told. Uh, and you just assumed it, it was due to an illness or old age, correct? No, I just, I mean, yes, I believe I did. And that's what doesn't up to me. I knew Jordan, he was always in great shape. We met a few days before his death actually, he wanted to reconnect, he was happy. It was obvious to me that he was planning something, and that wasn't to die in his bed. He didn't have any health problems, but enemies, those he surely had a surplus of. I can't believe it sounds far-fetched. I managed to find out the location of the medic who was examining Jordan's body, and who decided to burn the corpse in the same day, which already seems bizarre. And have you talked with him? No, I wanted to, but my demons caught up with me. Have you told anyone from the pack about your presumptions? No, it may sound harsh, but there's suspects as well. Suspects? You were supposed to be family. I don't really believe they did it. I certainly hope they didn't. But we can't rule out anything at this moment, so you cannot tell them about any of this. Not until we learn something valuable. Here, I have marked the location of the medic's house on your map. I don't know the exact place, you'll have to find it. Speak with him and report to me. I mean, if you're up to me, up for it. Of course I am. I'll be back. So the plot thickens. Talk to Dieter. Where is he? Oh, he's in. Eh, he's in the middle of the forest. Okay, let's go to him. He's close there. We will go. We will come past to him. All right, we are at the location of the medic's house. Or some, I guess those are buffaloes down there. Doesn't make much sense, but okay. Oh, shovel and a chest. Nah, oh, take the dollar. 350 coins, take all of that. And take this shovel. 
Okay, where is the house of the of the person? Medic, medic, not doctor. Uh, somewhere in the forest. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. There is the man. Just a bit somewhere over here. He lives in a very hmm, doesn't look very pretty or sleeping thing. Jesus, who's coming? Hello, I'm looking for a medic. Is that you? What? Who are you calling a relic? Oh, he's 85 years old. I said a medic. What? A medic? What? Medic? Oh well, that's me. And who are you? My name is Rasimir, and I don't bother. I won't remember anyway. What do you want? I wanted to ask you about... Wait, you're not my grandson, are you? No. Phew, that was good. I was afraid you were. Good thing I never had children then. If you didn't, then how could I... Whatever. It's about Jordan. Do you remember Jordan? Of course I do. He was the Castellan who died. Great shame. He was one of the good ones. I've been told that you have seen his body. Who told you that? I haven't seen anything. Go away. Please, it's really important. I have to know how he died. It was years ago. I don't remember. I'm old, you know. You shouldn't be asking about such things anyway. But I need to know the truth and you're the only one who can help me. Why? Because I don't have any leads besides this one. Why do you need to know? I'm his nephew. I came to the Wally after I lost my parents in the war looking for him. He was the only relative I had left. Listen, kid, it would be better if you dropped it. Seriously, so you don't have a hearing problem after all. Safety reasons, and for the same reason I won't be telling you anything about Yorda. Please, you must help me. I'm not joking, boy. Do you think I enjoy living all alone in the wilderness like this? I don't want to end up the same way as Yorda. So he really was murdered. I already said too much, leave. No, please, I'm begging you. I'll do whatever it takes to find out who did this. I re really can't, kiddo. I want to die on my own terms, and not due to, to a metal poisoning. What if I could help you leave the valley, make you safe? I don't know, this is my home and... And you're living in the woods scared for your life. That's not the way to spend your last days, wouldn't you agree? Damn you, reasonable youngling. Alright, if you get me a horse and, I'll su and some supplies, I'll tell you what I know. Great, I'll get onto it. I need somebody to escort me on the way as well. Even if they wouldn't find me, there are still bandits and wild beasts on the way. Okay, I'll find someone to protect you during your travel. And I want a wife as well. Forget it. It was worth a try. I'll come back. Okay, let's, let's go talk back to Kestrel. Tell her the news. Oh, hello Kestrel, I'm back. Oh, and she's walking around. Hello. How did it go? You were right. Jordan was murdered. To be honest, I was hoping that I was just paranoid. But it's true after all. Do you know who's the killer? I don't. Not yet. The old medic is completely cowed. He spent the last years living by himself in a cabin in the forest, pretending to be infirm. Damn. Isn't there a way to convince him? I found one. We need to arrange his escape from the valley. Great work, Rasimir. What do we need to get from him? A horse, some supplies, and someone to protect him on the way. Okay, leave the horse to me. Oh, thank you. I always had a way with horses. I'm close with Leonard, owner of the stable, so I'm sure I'll figure something out. You'll need to get the rest. For supplies, we should give him some coin, preserved meat, and a water skin filled to the rim. As for the protector, hmm. Try talking with Domagoy. He lives in Yezeritz and owes me a favor. He should do. I remember him being pretty agile. <laughs> okay, I'll be on my way. Alright. Uh, I have a water skin which I looted. That's great. We'll have to give up that. Some dried meat. How much dried meat? I have 11 dried meat which will probably get get spoiled and I need to go to Yezerit and it's getting dark can I sleep in the tower please please that would be so nice I will pay you hello hey old friend uh nope have a good day nope 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 well it's dark 
I should go home to sleep. Or shall I have a night adventure all the way to there? <laughs> yeah, let's have a night adventure to go all the way to there. Do, 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 do. So I was walking in the middle of a night and I found a cart full of manure and a bag. I'm gonna take the bag. Manure. Oh, what's this? Stone sickle. Yes, thank you for that. I will leave this manure here. I hate manure. Okay, let's run back to Yezeritsa. Wolves, wolves in the night. Will they start chasing me? I hope not. I mean, I took a shortcut over the mountains because I don't want to go all the way around, so... Yeah, let's hope they will not go after me. And I think I'm safe. Okay, let's go on the path and continue. And in the... Well, with late in the night, I have managed to arrive in Yezeritsa. Oh, there is a guard with a torch. Hello. Albert, can I warm on your torch so I don't waste mine? Okay, okay, where is the dude? He is sleeping. Well, let's wake him up. Gods. You're, you're spooky. You just... <laughs> yeah, while well, you're outside, go in. And he's just sitting. He's like, I don't care about the cold. <laughs> Hello there. Domingo, I came to ask you for help. You don't like wasting time, do you? I'm sorry, it's just the matter is pressing. And how am I involved in all that? Kestrel said, said you owe her one. She said that? Damn this woman. I thought she just liked me back. Um, uh, I don't know the details of your arrangement. Never mind, what does she need? There is an old man who needs escort during his travels out of the valley. It shouldn't take more than two days. Sorry, can't help you. But why? I don't have my crossbow anymore. Let's say it's broke. Broke to me being an idiot and losing it in some stupid riddle game. And if I get you a new crossbow, then I'll do it. I'll be back with your weapon. How? How do I... Where do I get the crossbow? I mean... Can I cook at your fire? No. How the hell will I get? Let's see the quest journal. Objectives. Talk to Ida. <laughs> she has his crossbow. Alright, another game of riddles. Let's go all the way back. In the darkness of the night, in the winter, winter night, and let's win that crossbow. But I think I will go sleep first. And on my travels while trying to get to home, I have arrived at another village, Tenitsa. Let's see what they have here. I mean, everybody is asleep, so there won't be much things to see, but... Yeah. Hello. Kunegunda. Negro. Can I steal your firewood? Okay, let's continue onwards. No, not that way, that way. I like their walls. Nice walls. Okay, let's press on. Alright, home sweet home. And let's check the traps if I catch some wood. Sweet little wood. Let's see. Yep. And my traps are wasted. Alright, how to build new traps. And the bird trap. Yeah, that that will also need to be built. Let's build them quickly. Pick up some sticks over here and stones. And once more, we're building a rabbit trap over here. And we're building a bird trap over here. There we go. And let's go cook the meat, go to sleep. Okay, I'll arrive home, make some meat at my campfire, I don't need the torch anymore. And time to sleep. And that's it. And next time I'll go to Ida and win that crossbow back, but until next time, bye.